show a piece on algebraic and geometric multiplicity of eigenvalues. All right, so there is a traditional matrix foo saying, some matrices are bad matrices. So we're just going to cover that here. For the most part, pretend this didn't happen. Um, this is an important thing, and, and many you know, there are a number of matrices in the world like this, and you can accommodate them in different ways. But let's get this nasty business out of the way. Okay, so let's imagine we have this little example here. It's, it's a diagonal matrix, 4, 7, 7. So you can see straight away the eigenvalues of 4, 7, and 7. Right, if you solve this, you get the uh, right, A minus lambda I. Straight away we get this. That uh, the eigenvalues are just sitting there. Uh, and so, and if you then go f go on and try to solve and find the associated eigenvectors, again, because this diagonal business is very simple, so uh, ln 1 equals 4, you'd end up with 1, 0, 0. So that's the, that's the, so the x direction, if you like, in x, y, z, that's the direction that this matrix multiplies by a factor of 4. You can see that's clearly what happens, right? It would amplify any vector, uh, any this part by 4. Uh, and then we have these two 7s here. So the deal is when we go to solve, let me make that more of a seven. When we go to solve for the eigenvectors, we've got seven twice, right? Seven appeared twice in the characteristic equation. Um, let me put it here. So it would be uh, four minus lambda, seven minus lambda squared is how that would work out, equals zero. So it appears twice here, but then when we go to find the eigenvectors associated with it, we can't use it twice, right? We, we simply have to put 7 in and see what happens. We're finding the null space of a minus 7 times i. We know there's some eigenvector here. There has to be at least one direction that, that 7 is associated with. And if you go through and solve it, you would end up with um, these two, here are two basis vectors for the space, and it's the y, it's the yz plane, actually. Let me put that well, it's the ba basis for the yz plane. Uh, so any vector that's pointing in the yz plane, hold on, what do we got? x, y, z. So any vector pointing in this plane um, will be multiplied by 7 if, it, if it's multiplied by this matrix. And any vector pointing in the x direction will simply be uh, amplified by a factor of 4. So it likes to grow things, but it disproportionately grows them in the zy plane, yz. Um, so the dimension of that null space is 2, right? And, and so we consider this to be kind of a good thing. This is a healthy matrix. It has a full set of eigenvectors. So here are the terms. Algebraic multiplicity is the number of times an eigenvalue appears as a root of the characteristic equation, the determinant of a minus lambda i equals 0. And so here, the algebraic multiplicity of um, 4 is 1, of 7 is 2. There are two of these. Geometric, so that's algebra, right? This is algebra. Geometric multiplicity is to do with space, and it's the dimension of the eigenspace associated with an eigenvalue lambda. So the eigenspace associated with lambda equals 4 is just is the x-axis, so 1, 0, 0. Uh, any multiple of that. So it has a geometric multiplicity of 1. And uh, we will say that 7 has a geometric multiplicity of 2. There's a plane associated with it. Right? So any vector in that plane. And we have a basis for it. Two vectors in the basis dimension is 2. So it's the dimension of the null space of A minus lambda I. And so I've written these things up here. Right? So algebraic multiplicity equals 4 is 1. It has the same geometric multiplicity. So that's a healthy thing, and again, a healthy thing here. Algebraic multiplicity of lambda equals 7. Uh, geometric multiplicity is 7 is 2, and the geometric multiplicity is 2. So, again, if you just have one it, uh, instance of an eigenvalue, you will definitely, it will be healthy. You will have uh, an eigenvector associated with it. But we can see there's just potentially, and we can talk about this later, but we can see there's, there's potentially going to be a problem. Uh, when there's a repeated one. All right, uh, so the observa an obs a pretty straightforward one is the observation is that geometric multiplicity has to be less than algebraic multiplicity, right? There's, the space adds up. There are only n dimensions, uh, so we can't overflow that. And, um, yeah, and the it has to be at least one, right? There's at least one eigen direction associated with a 
with a, an eigenvalue. All right, so here's a second example. So you can see we've got a bunch of zeros up here. Uh, it looks like it should be okay. I mean, this is not so different from the identity matrix, but these twos make a mess of things. So let's see what happens. So let's find the eigenvalues. So we're going to solve uh, the determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero. So um, set zero equal to this, uh, and here's a minus lambda. So we're subtracting lambda from the main diagonal. It's a triangular matrix, so there's nothing, um, we don't have to worry about the twos here, it's just a product of the diagonal uh, entries. One minus lambda cubed, Set that equal to zero, we have three roots that are the same. Lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, they're all one. All right, so lambda one has an algebraic multiplicity of three. So that's fine. So does the, so does the um, identity matrix, it has three, three dimensions. So, so. Uh, eigenvalue one, uh, geomet and it has an algebraic multiplicity of three. Because it preserves every direction, it's fine. It has a full complement of eigenvectors. Well, let's find the eigenvectors. So now we're going to solve this null space problem, a minus one, this is lambda, times i, uh, the identity, times v equals zero, right? We want to find the v's for which this is true, which v's like uh, this, which v's are associated with this uh, eigenvalue. So subtracting off one from the main diagonal, zeros everywhere, two, two. So we've crushed the main diagonal. Uh, so here's, we do one step of manipulation, or a bunch of things, I suppose. We're going to move this row to the first row, second row to the First row, we divide by two everywhere. So there's a pivot column, pivot column, free column. And if you go out and express the pivots in terms of the frees, well, there's the zero, right? So this really, this equation says x1 is zero, x2 is zero, done. So you end up with uh, the eigenvectors, or eigenspace, is really any multiple of just this, zero, zero, c, a zero, zero, one, I should say. Let's do it like that. C1. So it's pointing in the z direction. So the z direction is good. This, this thing will pr um, preserve the z direction. But it doesn't have any other eigenvectors. There are just simply none other, no, uh, no others that, that appear. The dimension of the null space associated with lambda equals 1 is not big enough. Right? Or the left, not, the left, sorry, the null space is not big enough. Uh, it has only dimension of one, and we say that the oops, uh, this should be one. The lambda equals one has a geometric multiplicity of one. So A is a bad matrix, it's a very bad matrix, and does not have um, a full complement of eigenvectors. which are really basis vectors for, these are basis for eigenspace. It's the way people say these things, it's really is bad. Um, it doesn't have a full set. We can't write down a basis for uh, um, all of Rn in terms of eigenvectors for this matrix. So that limits what we can do with it. We have to adjust, um, but a very, you know, this is an important uh, caveat for, for many of the things we'll work on but we'll just uh, sort of put it off to the side for a little bit. But there you go. Algebraic geometric multiplicities of eigenvalues. Trouble arises when we have repeated roots to the characteristic equation. Whenever that happens, there's potential for the dimension of the uh, null space associated with that eigenvalue just to not be big enough, to not uh, reach the algebraic multiplicity, and uh, for the matrix to not have a spanning set of um, eigenvectors. There you go.